In this video, we're going to look at how we use the Inventor Studio application within Autodesk Inventor to try and create realistic renders of our CAD models. Inventor Studio can be found in the Environments tab and it's the little teapot icon that you're looking for. Before we get to this stage, there's a couple of settings we want to adjust in Inventor to make sure we get a high quality render. First, we go to our Tools toolbar. Once in the Tools toolbar, we go to look at Application Options. That op opens up the General tab, and then we're looking to navigate to Colors. We want to make sure that this option is set to Presentation. That's the In Canvas Color Scheme. And we want to make sure the background is then set to one color. This changes our background to being white and makes it much easier to cut out our rendered item from a background. Once those settings are changed, you can click Close and they should stay set on your profile for the next time you log into a PC. From here, we're going to go into View and we've got lots of different options up here that we can use to make our rendering a little bit better. Once we're in this toolbar, we first want to make sure that we've got all the material settings right on our individual parts. These shouldn't be changed in an assembly, they should be changed in the individual parts. In order to do that, you can either click on the model tree and open each item, or you can click on the parts by double clicking on here in the actual assembly and it'll open it from here. If I double click on that one, it'll open up my part and you can see I've applied first of all the material, I've chosen ABS plastic, and then I've chosen a colour from this drop down. It's really important to try and choose your material first and then choose your colour. You can also edit the colours in this little adjustment tab, but in order to get a really accurate render first time round, it makes sense to use the options from in here. Once I've got this one set up, because I'm in an assembly, I can go back and hit return. That takes me back into my assembly and now I'm ready to edit these settings. First is visual style. You can see I've got a range of different options, but the one for doing a render is realistic up at the top. You'll see some very, very minor adjustments to how it looked a minute ago. Not much, but enough to see there's a difference. From here, we've got options for shadows. Ground shadows are ones that only work if you've got the correct work plane set up below. You can see when I turn on ground shadows, I get a small shadow around the bottom. It looks more realistic, but it does require you to have the correct work plane set up. If, for example, you've got your item facing upside down on the top, it's going to look like your ground shadows in the wrong place. So it can be helpful just to keep this one off and switch to have object shadows and ambient shadows. And you can see some little shading coming in here. Reflections work the same way as the ground shadows. If your work plane's set up right, then this will look okay. If not, you'll find that the reflections point in a different direction. Again, if you're going to be cutting this item out and putting it onto a different kind of background for a piece of desktop publishing, it's best to have ground shadows and reflections turned off. Another setting worth changing is moving from orthographic to a perspective view. Initially, it will look a little bit skewed, but it's helpful to then be able to rotate it around because it does give you that real sense of depth to your item. When positioning your item in the screen for a render, you want to make sure it's facing the angle that you want and it's positioned as big as it can be within the screen. First thing to do is use either the Orbit tool or the View Cube to spin your item around to face the way you want. The View Cube is a good way of getting it into the approximate orientation and then using the Orbit tool, you can then make small adjustments to get the angle that you're happiest with. From here, you can then use the zoom options. You get zoom, zoom all, or zoom to a window. Stick with zoom for this part, and then what you can do is click and drag your mouse in to fit it into the screen. If it's slightly out of position, use the pan tool to click and drag it into the center of the screen. I'm making the image as big as I can within the screen to make sure it renders to the highest quality. Once my item's in position and I'm happy with its orientation and I've set all my materials, then I go in to the Environments tab. Here I can find the Inventor Studio option, which is shown with a little teapot. 
Clicking on Inventor Studio changes your toolbar at the top and this temporary render toolbar appears. You'll notice that the lighting has got quite bright and that's one of the first settings we can change. Within Studio Lighting Styles, you get a range of different options. Some are really advanced and quite complicated. Other are far more simplistic. We're going to stick with the local lighting styles and we're going to choose warm light for this one and just simply select done. At this point, I can click on render image, just a little teapot icon. And you'll see I've got different settings here. Now initially the width setting will be quite small, maybe 12 or 1600 pixels. Before we make any changes to these sizes, we want to make sure that we have this little option ticked. It should definitely have lock aspect ratio selected. Here, I would aim to change to at least 2000 pixels, no more than 3000. So two and a half thousand pixels is a good option. I'm gonna keep my current view for my camera. And then you'll see here that I've got options for the different lighting, just like we looked at a minute ago. Some of these will add image-based lighting backgrounds. At national five level and higher level, we don't need to use the image-based lighting settings. So we're gonna select one of the more simplistic lighting styles. At higher level, you will be required to add in some of your own lighting, but for national five, we can use some of the basic settings. Depending on which lighting you choose, you'll get a different effect on the item. My output is where I choose to save my rendered image. You can make a choice here or you can select that later on. And then you go into your renderer. You can choose to set a time for how long it renders. The less time that it renders, the lower the quality of the image. The longer it renders, the higher the quality. If you render by iteration, that is the number of times the rendering process will repeat. The higher the number, the higher the quality. Or you see what I've got selected here, until satisfactory means it will render until you tell it to stop. We obviously want our lighting and material accuracy to be high, so we get a good quality render, but this does impact on how long it takes. And then we want to make sure that our image filtering is set not to Gaussian, but to triangle. And we want to lower that to the lowest it can go. Doing this will give us a much crisper edge around the edge of the render. Now, before I select the render, you can see I've got different materials present here. I've got a plastic that is quite smooth and shiny at the top. I've got a high, highly reflective piece of metal up at the top here, a clear bit of plastic in the middle, and then repeating the smooth red plastic down at the bottom. Anything that has a high shine finish will take longer to render because it tries to reflect the light. If something is metal, which is very reflective, that will also take longer. And if you've got something that has a transparency that is clear, again, it can take quite long to render around areas where it overlaps another item. So we should expect this area and this area to take longer to render. And that's where you want to increase either the iterations or increase the length of time that you wait for it to render. When I select render, it'll open up a new window. I'm just gonna maximize that just now. And you can see that gradually what it does is it starts to polish off the image. Each iteration that goes by increases the number down here. The image will become clearer. You can see that it's still quite pixelated around here and around the metal bar down here, and especially in this section. What we have to do is wait until we've got enough iterations to be happy with. A countdown timer is present here, and again, the longer you leave this, the better the quality. If you want a really complex image to render to a really high quality, sometimes you'll be waiting from, up, from 30 minutes up to at least an hour. If for any reason you need to stop the render or it reaches a point where you are happy, the little red X pauses the rendering and it allows you the option to save at whatever stage you're at. And you can see here's a temporary one that I've already saved. If I want to keep going, I simply hit continue rendering. We can then allow that process continue until we are happy that it's rendered to a satisfactory quality. This allows you to continue other operations doing other parts of your assignment or other parts of your classwork while this task performs. So I've now left the renderer working in the background for six minutes. You can see we've completed over a hundred iterations 
I've still got some pixelation in here, but most of the other surfaces look as though they've gone in at a high quality. You can see quite a good reflection up at the lighting. You can see the polished metal comes through here, and it's quite a crisp finish to the clear material down in the middle. I would probably want to leave it running maybe up to 200 iterations just to make sure I'm happy with it, and again, I could wait a little bit longer. What I'm going to do just now is I'm going to pause my rendering, I'm going to save that, and I can select where I'm going to save it and what I'm going to call it. Prior to saving it, you can choose which image type. I would recommend PNG or JPEG to get the best quality. You've also got the options here where you can change how big an image it's going to be, how many dots per inch, and again, I've made that the biggest I can to make sure we've got a really high quality image for when we print it out. Click OK, and then what we can do is we can click Save, I'm just going to overwrite the one that I've got previously and then that will save in my folders for using later on. If I wanted, I can resume the rendering to allow it to render to a better quality until I'm absolutely happy with it. So some key things to remember when you're rendering, that you've maximised the size of the item and you've used your view cube, the pan tool, the zoom tool and the orbit tool to get it into a position that you're happy with and how you plan to use it. Make sure that your view settings are correct, that you've got a realistic visual style, you've chosen the shadows you want, you've decided whether or not you can use reflections and the ground shadows as well. Decide whether you're going to use orthographic or perspective, and I would always recommend perspective. Inventor Studio can be found in the environment tab, and it'll open this tab at the end for render. And remember, when you're rendering the image, choose a lighting style that makes sure you've got a really good, realistic set of lights on the item. When you're working at higher, you will need to create your own lights. You do need to remember as well to lock the aspect ratio and increase the size of the image so you get a good resolution image. And you make sure that when you're using the renderer, you've selected whether you're doing it by time or by iteration or our recommendation of doing it until you're happy with it. That you select triangle for the image filtering and you reduce that size right down to the bottom before you render.